Congratulations on joining our team here at Native Solutions. This is the first step in becoming an integral part of our company. This video we will take you through the basics of what you need to know about how we operate and our health and safety expectations. If at any time you have a question, please hit pause and ask your team leader for further explanation. They are here to help. You are expected to abide by Native Solutions health and safety policies and rules at all times. We strive to have a safe workplace so health and safety is everyone's responsibility. So get involved. We will expand more on these expectations further in our health and safety video. So get comfortable but stay focused as you may be asked to complete a short questionnaire at the end of the video. You will be reporting to your team leader. They could be with you right now. Some days your team leader might not be with you for the entire day. You will be informed the day before or in the morning who you will be reporting to and who is in charge of the site for the day. Your team leader is the go-to person for any question regarding the tasks required of you. Applying for leave, applying for equipment reimbursements, health and safety or any other work-related query. Basically, your team leader is the go-to for any matter. They will then refer you to the required person if they cannot answer your question. So, who do we go to? Ask your team leader! You have been given a copy of your job description. This outlines the basics of the job. This may change from time to time and should give you a basic idea of what your duties and responsibilities are on a day-to-day -day basis. There are, however, a few things we need to make sure we cover for you. Over the next few weeks, you will be learning the job. Ask lots of questions. There will be a standard we expect you to meet. Your team leader will talk you through this so you can both agree on a realistic goal. We are production-based, so speed is important, but so is quality. Planting season is especially busy. We have a short period of time to complete our workload, so it gets pretty manic and there could be targets we need to meet in order to get the work done. You will need to follow instruction from your team leader at all times or whomever is nominated to be in charge. We expect you to bring your A-game every day to work. Your quality, work ethic and mood should be at its best. Leave your personal issues at home if possible. Be polite and respectful of your team members and other Native Solutions or external company staff at all times. Yes, we all have a bad day every now and then, so make sure you talk to your team leader and let them know what's going on. We all need to make this a hard-working, enjoyable environment for everyone. If you have any issues or questions, we have an open door, so talk to us or someone about it. This job is a physically demanding role and a long-standing tree planter is likened to a marathon runner. So you need to take care of yourself by getting enough sleep, enough water intake and eating a balanced diet. An elite athlete wouldn't fuel its body with sugary drinks, lollies, chips, processed foods. So why would you? Bring your lunch with you, you will not stop on the way to pick it up from a store. You could be in the middle of nowhere, so be prepared with adequate nourishing food and a very large full drink bottle each day. As per your employee agreement, you are expected to work a set amount of minimum hours. Realistically, you'll be exceeding these hours in planting season. A high season runs from approximately mid-April to the end of September. There may be early starts and late finishes, especially in high season, but your team leader will communicate this with you. Breaks are mandatory. Your team leader will endeavour to provide breaks at evenly spaced intervals, but some flexibility will need to be required. For those of you who smoke or vape, cigarette or vaping breaks are not to be taken outside of these break times. Smoking and vaping is not permitted in the vehicles. Your team leader will confirm your designated smoking area on each job site. If you are a smoker, please bring a jar to dispose of your butt safely. We don't allow littering on site and smoking has a high risk of causing fire if not disposed of correctly and safely. There are several different types of leave available to you. We will cover the two main leave entitlements that you will likely use. 
sick leave and annual leave. Sick leave is for when you are sick. It's important that you keep them for sickness. If you are sick, you must contact your team leader before work starts for the day. As stated in your employee handbook, we require a phone call, no text messages at least one hour prior to your start time. It's important to communicate. In some cases, we may require a medical certificate from you after three days. You must have worked 12 months before you can apply for annual leave. In special cases, we may allow advanced payment. If you wish to take some time off, you need to give a minimum of two weeks notice. Failing to give the minimum time frame will risk going unpaid. Ask your team leader for the time off first. If it's approved, they will lodge it through our Site App Pro app with your signature so payroll is aware of it. Leave will not be taken through the planting season. If you apply in this time frame, it is highly likely it will be declined. Only special cases will be considered. Leave is not always guaranteed. Never book flights or travel arrangements until your leave is approved. If you are unsure if it is approved, ask your team leader. Don't leave it too late. For any other leave entitlements, check your employer handbook or ask your team leader. We have a zero tolerance policy with regards to drugs and alcohol. Workers are not permitted to work while under the influence. Non-compliance with this policy and any associated procedure by employees may result in disciplinary action, up to and including termination. Every worker has the responsibility to present to work fit for duty. If you are concerned in any way about a perceived safety risk due to your own or any other of your colleagues' fitness for duty, you have a responsibility to inform your manager. Testing may be conducted based on reasonable suspicion or following an incident or accident. The business reserves the right to carry out random testing across all levels of workers. If you arrive for work and in the business's opinion you are not fit to work, we reserve the right to exercise its duty of care, particularly where we believe that you may not be able to undertake your duties in a safe manner or may pose a safety risk to others. Workers who are taking any prescription or over-the-counter medications or drugs, which may affect their ability to perform their work, must notify management as soon as possible. You may be required to produce a medical certificate stating that you are fit for work or specifying any restrictions. Please refer to your employee handbook for further information. Native Solutions teams can be located across a vast array of locations. Most of the time, you may be remote in nature. The work vehicles are for shelter, to sit and eat your lunch in, or you may choose to enjoy the sun and fresh air, so feel free to bring a small fold-out seat. Mobile teams don't have toilet facilities. You are all equipped with a spade and there should be toilet paper provided in the vehicles. You can guess what I'm trying to get at here. Hand washing facilities and fresh water should be available in the equipment truck. The working environment can often present hazards that may impact on the mental health of workers, potentially causing the worker to suffer a psychological injury. We are committed to helping to support the overall mental wellbeing of our workers and ensuring that the risk of psychological injuries in the workplace is eliminated and is effectively and proactively managed through a risk management approach. Employees must understand their responsibilities in relation to helping to minimise the risk to their own mental health and the mental well-being of others at work. Please refer to your Health and Safety Handbook for your responsibilities. If you are concerned for yourself or another teammate's mental health, please feel free to use our health checklist or talk to someone you trust. We are all here to help and support one another. In minimising the mental health risk to others in the workplace, you must not act or behave in a manner that could be or is considered as bullying or harassment. Such behaviour creates a risk to health and safety, whether intentional or not, and will not be tolerated. Please feel competent to bring a complaint of bullying or harassment forwards to us. You will not be victimised for having brought the complaint. It is the responsibility of everyone on the team to identify and report on-site hazards. So what is a hazard? A hazard is a potential source of harm or adverse health effect on a person or persons. For instance, a piece of equipment left sitting around site could lead to someone tripping and causing themselves injury. 
this piece of equipment sitting around and the trip is the hazard. What is the risk? Risk is the likelihood that a person may be harmed or suffer adverse health effects if exposed to a hazard. What this means is how likely or what level of injury could be sustained from the hazard. It is very likely that someone could trip over the equipment and how serious could the injury be? It is vitally important that you let your team leader or whomever is in charge know that you have identified a hazard. It must then be reported on a hazard identification form in the truck. The team leader can then do the necessary steps to deal with the hazard and deal with the risk. Ask your team leader where it is and they can show you how to complete it. Every cruel workplace will have what we call a near miss daily. They are the almost moments, no matter how big or small. For example, the almost fell in a pothole, or I almost rolled down the embankment but managed to retain my footing. These are just as important as identifying hazards. They are the things that almost caused an injury and need to be dealt with promptly before it happens again. Next time could be a worse outcome. Your team leader will ask at every toolbox meeting if the crew have had any near misses. It's time to speak up so you can all be aware and deal with the hazard as a team. We do handle chemicals of varying forms in our company from time to time. When doing so, it's vitally important to listen to your team leader's direct instructions around their use, handling and personal protective equipment, or PPE as it's known. SDS sheets are available to check on our Site App Pro app that the team leaders have on their phone. If you'd like to have a look over the chemical information and its safety, please ask your team leader to bring them up for you. They will be more than happy to help. The key hazards that you are encounter or could encounter are the following. Back and muscle strain, infection from cuts, abrasions, splinters or thorns, fatigue, dehydration, sun safety, foreign objects to the eye, traffic and road hazards and weather conditions. How do we minimise these key hazards? Stretch and warm up the body before you start work. You might feel a little silly, but remember this. A marathon runner wouldn't start without priming his muscles and body for the big run. So, so should you. If you do get a cut, scratch, abrasion or splinter, use the first aid kit and clean, disinfect and cover the area. Make note of the first aid treatment on your first aid form by letting your team leader know. Make sure you take a good shower at the end of the day and use soap to wash away the dirt and grime. Your teammates will also appreciate a bit of soap and deodorant. Fatigue can be increased by many different factors within the workplace and your personal life. So how can we help to reduce fatigue? There are some very simple things that you can do yourself in and out of work. Get enough sleep. Sleep is one of the most important things your body needs. Every person varies as to what amount of sleep they need. On average, it's between seven to nine hours per night. Work out what time you need to be asleep by in order to get up for work on time. You are entitled to take breaks throughout your working day. Make sure you take them. Having some downtime helps the body to recuperate and refuel. How you are feeling in yourself plays a big part in how fatigued you will feel. When life gets tough, stress can impact your energy levels. It's important to recognise the signs and seek help if you are struggling. Talk with your team leader or someone you trust about how you are feeling. Life is busy, so make sure you take time out. Overloading your time out of work hours can lead to what most would call burning the candle at both ends. Our bodies need time to relax and recover mentally and physically. Find some time to just chill, watch your favourite TV programme or go for a short walk around the park. Your body will thank you for it. Water intake is vitally important and should be your number one priority during the day. The teams will have a cold water supply for you to top up during the day. Your team leader will explain where this is located. Be mindful that just drinking water alone may not be enough. When we are physically active at high levels, our body is using up vital mineral stores and also be aware that too much water can lead to the body being flushed of these minerals. Look at adding an electrolyte replacement into your water to help hydrate you rapidly and keep those essential minerals at the correct levels. Have a talk with your team leader around electrolyte supplements and where you can purchase them. New Zealand sun is one of the harshest in the world. Make sure you wear your sun hat, sunscreen, light long sleeves and light long pants to help protect you. 
seek shade in your brakes. Sunscreen is provided in all the trucks, so make sure you apply it before sun exposure and at least every two hours during the working day. We recommend sun hats with a large brim or neck flap to give ultimate protection. Prolonged sun exposure and physical exertion can lead to heat stroke. Heat stroke is where your body has got too hot and more than likely dehydrated. It's vitally important that you follow the previous recommendations for hydration and sun protection during the day. You will be working in a pretty dirty environment. When the team leader deems it applicable or you feel it's necessary, then safety glasses are to be worn at all times. Be careful with your hands touching your eyes as this can move debris into the eye. Also be mindful of the plant species or equipment you are using. This may also pose a hazard to the eye area. If in doubt, check with your team leader. When it comes to keeping ourselves safe, PPE is one of the controls we can use. Don't get complacent though, PPE is the lowest control when it comes to risk management. If we can find a way to eliminate the hazard, we are on to a win. So, what is our required PPE? It depends on the site you are working and what team. Let us give you a quick overview of what to expect when working in different areas of the company. The level of PPE is pretty minimal for forestry planting compared to other jobs we do. A typical site will require you to wear a high visibility top, a steel toe lightweight lace-up waterproof work boot with good grip, a sun hat or a warm hat. There is a degree of risk with these jobs. Usually you'll be exposed to traffic, construction work, heavy machinery and noise. They require far more PPE to keep you safe. A long sleeve high visibility top or vest with reflective strips, long lightweight pants, a hard hat, safety glasses, a steel toe lace up leather work boot with good grip, appropriate gloves and you may also need a set of earplugs or earmuffs. There is a huge amount of PPE needed when using a chainsaw. A high visibility lightweight top, long lightweight pants or shorts. Steel cap high lace up work boots with extremely good grip. A pair of chainsaw chaps and a hard hat with mesh visor and earmuffs. The chemicals we're exposed to can be a bit nasty. PPE is vital for your protection, especially against contact with the skin and inhalation. You'll need a long sleeve high visibility top, PVC overalls or pants, waterproof boot or gum boot, a respirator mask, safety glasses, and appropriate gloves. Make sure your PPE is up to scratch. There should be no tears, rips, cracks, damage or fading to it. If it's not up to scratch, ask for a replacement straight away from your team leader. Don't keep the old item, throw it away or give it to your team leader for disposal. We expect you to present a professional image with regards to your appearance and standards of dress and maintain excellent standards of personal hygiene at all times. You are a direct reflection of the company. Your PPE should only be worn for work and during work hours. All PPE and business items must be returned upon completion of your employment with us. In the case of an emergency, such as fire, earthquake or injury, you will need to refer to your emergency plan. Your team leader should let you know on the first day of a new site what the emergency plan is and where to find it. This is a really important piece of information. Everybody needs to know how to access it in case you need to report an emergency quickly or notify the emergency services. It holds information such as where the closest exits are, what is the signal for an emergency, where are the nearest helicopter landing sites, who to contact if there is an emergency, and who are your first aiders on the site. All of these things are vitally important to know. The quicker we can respond, the better are your chances of getting out safely. If we do have an emergency, you need to follow your team leader's instructions at all times, or the first data. With the help of our flowchart, this is how a typical emergency should operate. Ask your team leader where it's located for future reference.
Your team leader will let you know who your first aiders are on site and where to locate the first aid kit. On your first day, you will be shown where all the fire extinguishers are kept and how to check if they are functional. These items can be stored in different locations depending on the site and the equipment. It is really important that you know every day where they are located. Look for the green first aid or the red fire extinguisher sticker on the vehicles. This will indicate where they can be located. We aim to prevent incident and injury in the workplace. However, things can still happen. It is essential that proper records of these are kept. All employees need to be aware of a few important points. All injuries, no matter how minor, must be reported to the team leader. Yes, that includes a splinter or a minor cut that may have only needed a band-aid. They must report this within 24 hours. Any early signs of strain or injury must be reported within 24 hours. Any damage to plant, vehicles, tools or equipment must be reported as soon as they are noticed. Use of first aid or application of basic first aid must be reported in a first aid form. If it is a severe injury, make sure you seek medical attention from our on-site first aiders. Emergency procedures may have to be actioned. Injury or incident will go through an investigation process. Don't be alarmed if your team leader has to complete a form asking you questions about what happened. It is vitally important that you are honest, open, clear, remember as much information as possible, and if you can, take some photos. Once this has been completed, and depending on the severity, a few things could happen. We may have to notify WorkSafe, a further investigation may need to be undertaken, a review of the incident may occur to try and eliminate it from happening again, and new procedures may be rolled out. In light of the COVID-19 pandemic, specific procedures have been put into place to ensure we try to stop the spread and keep one another safe. If an outbreak was to become apparent, we will need to instigate specific procedures. These will depend on the level of risk. As you all know, the government will dictate what alert level we sit at. Staff will be notified of the alert level and if they can carry on working. If your team can carry on working, it will more than likely be with new procedures. You may find you need to enforce the following. Keep social distancing of either one to two meters, depending on the alert level. You may be required to wear a mask, and these will be mandatory on public transport, including airlines and ferries. Hand washing and sanitizing will be enforced. When in a minimum of alert level two, pandemic kits will be enforced in all vehicles. They will include all the contents you need to help reduce the spread of the disease. The most important thing is, if you have symptoms, do not come to work. Let your team leader know, get checked out by your doctor or call Healthline for further information. Health and safety is a team effort and legally everyone is liable. We want everyone to get home safe. Always think ahead communicate. If you find or see something that is unsafe, please tell your team leader and step in if your teammates are being unsafe. It takes a team effort to create a great health and safety culture in our business. Please look out for your teammates. This concludes our health and safety section. We have only just covered the basics. You will be upskilled as you go along around further health and safety procedures. So if you have any questions, refer to your health and safety handbook or Ask your team leader! <laughs> <laughs> Just gonna listen to a little bit of a rod tonight in a bit, Harry. Huh? Recording. <laughs> <laughs> Hand washing facility, facilities. <laughs> and minimizing the mental health. Let's just stop that again. One moment, please. Ah, oh, fudge. Pose. <laughs> Should we do that again? Five, five.